One of the main questions I get asked, and actually one of the main questions I have for myself is, when can I start planting my potatoes? When can I start planting my seeds? And today is not too early. So let's get planting. <laughs> It's reached that time of year where I get to start planting some of my seeds, some in the main beds, some in the seed trays. I've also got my potato seeds, which I'll take you through in a minute, but one of the easiest ways to identify what you've put and where you've put it is to have little plant tags. These are little plastic ones you pick up for pence in a garden centre, you can pick them up online. I prefer to make them. I'm lucky enough to have a laser cutter, I've got the light burn software, and I like to make my little sticks that go in. Um, I may as well, as I've got the equipment. So, hey, yeah, I thought I'd just take you through the main bed that I've got in the polytunnel. It just looks like a coconut core dry desert. But it's, actually, if you go under the top surface, you suddenly reach a moist level. And then under that, you realize how much compost and that there is in here. Now you'll also find buried in here is that I've got water lines. The way I've set my beds up here are to have two ways of adding water without water in the top. So I've got the the hose there, the sort of drip feed hose. That runs just under the top surface, maybe an inch or two down. And then we've got the soak away pipe. This is one of the pipes that, you know, you've got the little cuts in. This goes right down to sort of maybe three, four inches from the very bottom. I did that so that I was able to actually add water to the very bottom of the bed because in the middle of the summer, if I'm not here for a few days, I'm able to water the very bottom of the bed without adding lots of water to the top. Last year, it, it turned out to be a lifesaver, really. I, I could water the deep root without potentially giving the, the rise of blight for the tomatoes. Okay, the actual soil itself is a mixture of coconut core compost, and then as you go down, it, it, it does have a mixture of topsoil in there. You can see that it's got perlite in it. That's just for moisture retention. As far as I can get down there easily digging, I don't want to go too far because actually at the bottom, there's about two or three inches of broken terracotta and that was just to help the the drainage at the bottom I, I don't want it to get stagnant at the bottom I don't water sitting there you will see here I've got little drain holes so although I can fill this pipe up and that's only a few inches from the bottom I think it probably sits about here with the water coming out around this level it then does feed to the whole bed rather than just go out the bottom but also as soon as I can see water coming out of the bottom I know that the bed is fully hydrated when it does rain outside the water travels along the concrete and it soaks up into the bed which is really good I have as well put the um, drip hose on yesterday I put it on ready because I was gonna be planting some seeds and uh, a couple of my seed potatoes. So it is not too early to plant your first early potatoes. Certainly I've got Swift here. I've got my Swift first early. I absolutely love these. I love the flavor, I love the versatility. Anything that can be made into a chip is amazing in my book. Then you've got Charlotte, sort of new potatoes. I like these because although they're a second early, they, in the polytunnel, they're good for any time of the year. I, I was growing these at the end of the year when sort of potatoes were done. We were putting these in and you were getting little baby Charlotte potatoes really, really quickly. Um, a matter of maybe 40, 50 days done. The Swifts, again, these are a 60 day cropping one. So although they're seen as early, you can put them in at a later time and they, you know, they're just a different texture to some of your others. You've got, I've got Nicola. It's my first year trying these. Um, a lot of people don't seem to like these because they're quite waxy. I like that because although they're for boiling mash salad, I still like to make chips out of them. I love chips. And I figure these will be really good 
in my air fryer. And then we've got King Edward main crop. Again, they make nice chips, they make nice roast potatoes, they're an all-rounder. I'm not a big fan of main crop potatoes, really, in terms of, I like to eat potatoes sort of early summer, and although I'll eat chips and that all year round, I, <sighs> Main crop are just a bit bland, really. Like, the, the difference between, and I'm sure plenty of people argue with me, and please do, put in the comments if you think I'm completely wrong, and tell me, actually, what variety I'm missing out on, because where before I've done Maris Piper, Maris Bard, things like this, and certainly some later cropping ones, they're just a bit disappointing. And you get so many that time of year that I don't see that the difference between them and the ones that you get in the supermarket, there's much difference. However, your early potatoes, not only is it exciting that you're able to dig up and you know, harvest um, a crop so early, but they taste amazing and they taste far better than what you can get in the supermarket. That, that's just fact. If you disagree, tell me in the comments, but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure of that one. So, I've also today got some, got some more seeds. I've got some cucumber. They're the Telegraph ones, so they're the nice ones, like what I'd call the real ones. Uh, some peppers. These did really well last year in here, although I, I, I seeded late for them. They did really well until the sheep came in and ate all the plants. Squash, I've already got some squash in, but I love squash so much. And I want to get some of these seeded ready to go onto my allotment. Look at that price, 99p each. Fair enough, there are only eight seeds, but how many plants do you actually need? Um, 50p when you buy three, so 50p a pack. I think that's brilliant value. I've got more broad beans. I like to do loads of different varieties of broad beans. Um, mix them in sometimes i'll do alternate varieties because one will normally get black fly worse than the other or you know vice versa last year i did tomatoes sort of from here all the way down in between i did the marigolds which you still got, got some marigold growing there so any tomatoes here will get planted this year last year i bought some uh, plants already done i will probably still do that as well as doing my own and then we've got a mystery one, which could be anything really. The seeds look a little bit big for carrot. Uh, it could be parsnip. I don't know, I'll put a row in and see, I think. That's what we've got so far. We've got these little pegs that I just made up. I like to use a pencil, so for instance, we'll do swift. And then today's date, which I don't think the year matters too much. Um, I like to know the date just because my memory's rubbish. And certainly with early potatoes, it's really good to make sure that you reach the sort of 60 day mark on the uh, earlies because you don't want to be digging ones up when, you know, they're not ready or leaving them in too late for that matter. Right. Let's... Uh, Let's do some seeds and do some seed potatoes. Let's go. I'm gonna be digging this out completely by hand. Um, one of the reasons is because I've got the water hose going right through here and I wanna be able to miss it. Well, there's a nice big earthworm there. In order to get a good amount in here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all I'm putting in for now, just to have a few potatoes. So first one's in. Boom. A load of these will also go into my allotment as well. So that first label that I did, I like to put them in line with where they are. This one can go there. I've got an old one here that I'll just put in just to show where they are. I have previously done it where I put the potatoes in early, very deep, and just put some salad on the top. And the salad's actually grown and matured before the potatoes have come up. Um, it was good use of space. You've got to get your timing really right. Um, I think where I had the, I think it was spinach actually, they were already tiny little plants. So I put the spinach in, grew them, took them up, 
as the potato started to rise. Over the next week or so, I'm actually going to expand the amount of bed space in here by about double. I've got the blocks. I'm only going to do a single block height, like uh, bed number two. Um, but it means that I'm going to have a lot more room for growing things that don't need more than about 20 centimetre root. Now I don't purposely chip my potatoes, I don't put them out in card or anything like that because where I've previously done that, I've put them out and they've been caught by frost and if I leave them on the table at home my wife clears them up so I've just kept them actually in sort of our boiler cupboard that's down in the kitchen just in a dark place and they've, they've sprouted really nicely or chitted. Chitty chitty bang bang in my head. Bang bang chitty chitty bang bang. So you just love the feeling when you've actually planted something and you know that now you just have to wait and then see what happens. It's quite an exciting time, I find. Having deep beds in the polytunnel actually really help to stop frost and cold weather getting to the potatoes. As well as that, you can make sure that you've got a nice dark top. Another option is to cover them. You can cover them with a fleece, you can cover them with an old duvet, you can cover them with a piece of wood. That will actually help but don't cover them during the day whilst they are getting good heat. These are the trays that I bought from Plants Galore or Grow Direct, whatever they're called where you are. They're made from a recycled plastic, which is good. Although, I guess on the colour, they're probably not re-recyclable afterwards. So for this, they're just the standard ones with the little holes in. I've got a soil mix here that is a potting compost with a little bit of perlite in just to make sure that it uh, holds the moisture which is important in a polytunnel as well certainly as soon as it starts warming up I do this on the bed here because then whatever I'm spilling just goes into the main bed anyway there we are so smooth the top off these now if you press them go right down it's by no means compacted soil or anything like that so it's perfect for the seeds so the first thing we're actually going to set is some of the tomato seeds now these are tomato aroma these are from a quite cheap amazon kit that i bought for the kids i don't hold up too much hope for it but you never know i'm gonna put at least two seeds in each one Certainly, I'm not expecting them all to germinate, but also with little muddy hands like I've got, or big muddy hands like I've got, it's very hard to separate them out individually. I'd rather have to weed them out, so to speak. I don't want a huge amount of tomato plants. I certainly don't want a huge amount of the same ones. So I'll put them back over the bit that I've already done. That top bit now, just sprinkle a little bit more of this over it very lightly. It's at sort of the right moisture content this. It's, uh, it's not been watered, but um, it's nice and damp. In them, we've got Roma tomato. So that one in there nicely. Then I've also got tomato ace. Don't know this variety. Let me know if it's any good. If you've got experience with any of these varieties I'm saying, let me know. Certainly because I'm going into this a bit blind with what I've got already. Um, I just want to, I may as well use them up. If we have frost in the next couple of days, it shouldn't be a problem. 
after that, once they've germinated, if we get a frost, it could be an issue. Remember, your seeds can get frostbite from the top and the bottom. So it's okay covering the top, but make sure you also insulate the bottom. You could just use a simple piece of bubble wrap, or you could put on something like wood, which is less likely to get cold than the glass. Here where I've got the glass, I've also got a plastic tray here. The tray will act help to insulate the bottom. Further that, I could get a little cardboard egg tray like this. I can put that on, that'll help even more. I forgot to mention, I did actually add some um, grit. Which I didn't say um every time I went to say something. I added some Limor sand, so sharp sand from the local area. Finally, oh, it's here, is Marmandi. I'm sure I've said it wrong. Tomatoes again. put these on this tray I can add water directly to the tray then I can also make sure that it doesn't get cold on this glass surface so now we have squash peppers cucumber cucumber there's five seeds there's then eight seeds for the squash now a lot of these the squash will say so indoors much to May outdoors May peppers so indoors now polytunnel's not indoors but it's somewhere in between indoors outdoors ideally you'd use a conservatory or a nice warm light windowsill in a house where it's a nice 18 20 degrees probably this year it's probably like five degrees because no one can afford to heat their house but um, this isn't the ideal temperature it's got the ideal light but of course seeds don't need light for the first, well, throughout germination to when they've gone past the first two leaves um, or up to the point where they've got first two leaves, they don't actually need the light. But this does start to heat up as time goes. You know, you've got a big dark soil heat bank here, really. And if I turn the, the top of this and expose the dark a bit more when the sun's out this whole thing gets very warm when i was digging down there the soil is warm it's not cold if it's going to be really cold and the top of this is dry sometimes i'll bring the seeds onto here and put the put the lids on if it's going to be really really cold i'll put them in the caravan overnight because the caravan's insulated enough to keep them warm now there's always a risk doing seeds at the end of February and the risk is that we have a prolonged period of cold weather and you lose your seeds. Well the seeds that I'm planting today I think come to a combined cost of about £3.50. I think it's a risk worth taking because if you can get an early crop the satisfaction is worth £3.50 every day of the week. I know I'd pay £3.50 to have more crops early and then it means certainly in a polytunnel it means that you can go again or it means you can move to your next lot it definitely it's, it's not too early some people will not even on their allotment won't set until sort of April late April some as late as May why if you get a cold spell put some more seeds in Put some more plants in. It's not a problem. You know, take some risks. As gardeners, we're, we don't like taking risks. As a gardener with ADHD, I love risks. Brilliant, perfect. Let's do it, try it. 
not too early. Simply using bubble wrap or a plastic or a fleece or anything like that can really help protect your plants. Bubble wrap is a really good one because it will still let the light through but it really will keep the heat off. Now if you've got a bubble wrap sleeve like this you can actually put the whole tray inside of it. At the moment we're not forecast weather cold enough to make that necessary so I'm, I've just been resting it on the top. This allows the heat from the sun to still heat up the dark soil. When it's looking like it's going to get cold at night don't heavily water your plants. You see to plant seeds they're more likely to suffer from frost if they've got a lot of water. I'm not saying let them dry out completely just keep an eye on the forecast and try not to water them until the morning when you can actually see whether it's been frosty or not. Moving them into an area where they're going to get a lot of sun onto the dark soil will also help warm up the soil during the, the day. This not only protects them from frost, but it also helps the seeds to germinate because they're triggered by the warmer temperatures. Um, I've got more on the polytunnel coming. We've got the build of the new beds. I've obviously got the seeds that have started to grow. Yeah, I look, really look forward to the new growing season. Really, really excited. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.